hello guys and welcome in this new video on the game engine series now in the previous videos we have been talking about tile maps drawing and all that kind of stuff and uh, we also talked about the map parsing system or the parser whatever you might want to call it now we created that map and uh, yeah we're not able now to use it because we don't um, I mean we, we can't draw anything on the screen right now because as we created our tile layer class we didn't implement the render function and uh, we're gonna be doing that in this video and uh, before we get started I just want to say it's gonna look a little bit weird but you know um, anything is easy uh, anything is easy in life we have to fight when we want to get something out of life and if you just want to give up because you didn't get it so I don't think you're gonna get a lot from life and uh, one thing I also want to say is if it didn't work for you if you have any problem you can still go out and download the source code on the patreon post I did um, I'll try to make things clear so that you can understand I'm, I'm not trying to get the money out, out, of, out of your pocket so don't think I, I'm going to be trying to do things so that you don't understand or you don't get it no I'll try to do it clearly so that you guys can understand but if it didn't work you can still go out and get that from the link in the description below and you can still write comment in the section below and uh, yeah I think that's that's it so thank you guys for subscribing and uh, like this video and share it to find the content interesting now let's go ahead and write our render function now since we're gonna be rendering a two-dimensional matrix if you remember our matrix right here our tile map that's why I just created this so the first one is for row and the second one for columns I think that's straightforward I don't have to explain anything on that now the next thing I want to do is to get the current ID and put it in a variable so this is the tile ID if you remember I we, we, we have been talking about this uh, throughout this each number here represent an ID for a tile which is on the tile set so and I'm actually getting the value of the current tile right here using this this tile ID now we want to make sure that tile ID isn't zero because zero means nothing so we have nothing to do for zero that's why if that tile ID is zero we just continue so the continue um, uh, instruction what it does is it actually jump out of this loop and start from the beginning this is really efficient because we have huge map and if we have to check every time and just keep going for everyone then it will take so much time because we have a lot of code coming down here and if every time we have to you know go through that even though the value was zero it doesn't make sense that's why we need somehow to make sure okay this tile ID is in zero and if it's zero we just go back to the beginning of the loop and start again till we get an ID which is not equal to zero now we need our else now in the case where we have an ID which is not zero I mean something that can actually be drawn on the screen now if you remember our map has more than one tile set has more than one tile set and when we get let me show you for example we have right here like the ID the ID of the first tile set is 1 and uh, the first tile set the first ID is 1 and you see the second is this and here for example you can see we have 400 and, and, and you know to 1 we actually want to know from which tile set is this tile coming from we need to know that because if you want to draw that on the screen we want to know from which tile set that tile is coming from that's why here we need to have like an index which is gonna be um, setting the value of the current tile set that we need to use in order for us to draw things on the screen so just call it int index so this index you could call it tile set index like tile set index whatever it doesn't matter anyway because if you remember the index is because we have this tile set list we want to know is this the first tile set or the second one we want to check and if we know which one it is we can use that to draw our value on the screen now we define this and we need to check something okay 
tile set dot size is greater than one. So if we have more than one tile set, because if we only have one, then we don't need to do all things that are coming in a couple of seconds right now. That's why we want to check: do we only have one tile set? If yes, then we don't need to transform the IDs because even though we have this ID like here with 4,000 and, and, and 4, uh, 422. If you go on the tile right here, let me open and show you. If I go on the object right here and I go to the setting section right here, if I choose the image, you see we still have one, two, three, four. But on our map right here, we have 4,000 and uh, 400. You see, we need to transform that ID to the real value. It's because the first ID here was 421, but it doesn't actually make that value here. We still have one, zero, and two here, even though we have 400 right here. It's a little bit annoying, I know, but that's why we need to find our own, our own algorithm how to handle that, how to actually convert our ID back to the real, uh, to the real value that it's supposed to have. And we only do that when we have more than one tile set because when you have one tile set then the id starts from one till the till count minus one but when we have more than one the next one will start from the till count of the last one plus one till the till count of the current one so it's weird it's a lot of uh, stuff that we have to deal with so we check if we only have one tile set so if we have more than one tile set in that case I want to paste this and try to explain this because if I write it, I will lose the focus on what I'm trying to say. Now we have this loop right here. We start from one because if you remember, we want to make sure that we have more than one because the first one starts from one. So we don't have to, to translate that anymore. The first ID, all tile coming from the first tile set will have right IDs. But those tile coming from the um, upcoming tile sets, the next ID, the second one, the third one, will have to transform their tile, their ID, so that we can actually use that to draw them on the screen. That's important. I know you guys cannot see why we're doing it right now exactly, but you will see that when we're trying to draw things down here in a couple of seconds. So now here we just go through the tile set list that we created our member variable and this is what we are actually doing we check if the tile ID we have right now is bigger than the tile set of uh, is bigger than the first ID of the previous element so let me go ahead and show you this right here on the on this guy so if the tile set if the tile ID right here that we have, for example, we have 421. If that, if it's bigger than the first ID of this guy here, so we check if the value of this tile is between this value and the tail count. You see, actually, we're checking if the ID is be is between that value. So we have the tile ID right here. We check, okay, is this tile ID bigger than the first ID, and is this smaller than? the last ID so is it in between so we want to know if it's in the the current tile set so if yes if that's the case then we need to translate and the way we translate is this is like a formal that I found out myself it was wasn't easy for me either you probably want to take time and pause and somehow trying to make this calculation on paper and I think you will understand this better so the tile ID is gonna be equal now the tile ID that we have now plus the tile set the current tile set tile count because if you see right here this guy has for example which one this guy has for example let's take the second one this guy has um, 91 tiles so the current ID that we want to calculate is going to be equal to the value that we have right now we take the count and we remove the last ID it will translate the value back to the ID that we have on our map right here so I don't have anything to draw or write so that you guys can understand so this is how it works and you actually have um, this index we set the index of the tile set to the current value because 
we checked if it was between the first and the last so it was so we just set the current tile, tile set as being the, the one we're using right now because we're going to be using that down here to draw that tile on the screen on the screen so now that we we've done that we can simply go out and um, try to draw things on the screen but for that so if you remember I have to open that image if I open this file right here we have this right here and each image has an index has an ID we actually going to be using that ID to calculate the row and the column so if you want to draw this image for example this image is on the first row and maybe the fifth column and with the ID we can actually do that so I still uh, I still have done this my own so I created and an, like a formal which was able to calculate that for me and yeah let me just kind of put it right here so guys you can see it's a little bit harsh to explain because there is too much information going on and I think you guys will understand this with the time the most important is that you get this working and when you get this working you will start changing some values and I think you will get the point of it so don't worry if you don't get it exactly right now it's it's not so easy I also struggle a lot with that it took me a lot of time to get that so now we can now say okay the index of the type set the current type set is like here for example one then we get from our list the type set number one and we put it in this temp variable now we need to calculate the row at which the tile is located so this is call count yeah and this is also call count make sure we set that value so and yeah to be able to calculate the row we simply say tile id we divide it by the tile count to have the 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 the, the row at which and the tile is located which simply divide the id by the tile count and to have the column we take that tile id we remove the tile row multiply by uh, the tile column minus one so I don't have a, like a two-dimensional array right here where I could draw and show you how I came to this but yeah as you can see this this will be working normally properly without any problem so now we also want to make sure because um, for the last tile on our tile set let me go out and show you that in image so let me open the tile right here so for this last line right here we have to make a special treatment because if we don't do that they will never appear that's why we check right here if the tile is um, you know is the last has the width of that tile set that's why we check that so we say call count if that's the case then we make sure we decrease from one because you know it always has one more and by the last one we have to decrease make sure that the last row and the last column will also be checked we do the same thing for this why we copy this and paste it right here that's why we we calculate the tile row and say okay tile row is equal to tile set count co column count minus one so if we don't do that then by the when we start when we try to draw this one this last line right here will not appear so we need to do that and uh, at the end we want to use our texture manager to draw things on the screen so we want to include this include texture manager but if you remember we need to load those texture first we need to grab the, the texture of the tile set first if you want to have this on the screen appearing we need to load them so let's go ahead and load them in the constructor right here so we we already done this let me check ah, this one shouldn't be here yeah. so i can simply copy this and let you see because i think i'll explain it better by ah. so we have this loop right here which actually run through the tile set list and for each component 
the name is going to be used as id we call our texture manager load function which takes an id for the texture and the source where the text where the texture is located the file that's why we have our assets folder so we're going to be putting it like that for now we're going to handle it we're going to pass this later with another xml parser for the texture manager but for now just edit like that so we have this asset uh, map if you remember this is where our file is located in our project we have the asset maps and yeah we have those two files which are the source that's why we simply add the source to this so that we can simply pass them so those files are going to be added into our texture map and we can simply access them through the draw function down here and draw the specific tile on the screen since we have the row and the column we will go and create a, rect a rectangle which is going to select only that part on the text on the on, on the, the tile set and draw it on the screen so i want to copy this i don't want to wrap this i'm going to paste it right here so it's a little long so we have the texture get instance draw tile hope we have this function in the texture manager let me go ahead and check not sure we have to add that so graphic texture manager do we have a draw tile no we don't so we need to add a draw tile now um uh, here is the product the how our function how our draw tile is looking so the draw tile is not so different from draw frame the difference is only that instead of using width and height we only have tile size so those two variables are converted into one so it's the same function but only this guy so you can simply go ahead and do that so i'm just want to just want to add that function right here i want to paste it you want to write that doesn't make sense for also spend time on that so you can see instead of having like here width and height we simply have like this and we make sure we remove also this row minus one so this is something if you go back to the previous video we talked about that because the rows are beginning from zero but we want that when we call our function we always give n plus one so if you want to render the first row instead of giving zero we simply give one and this guy will take time to put that back to zero because it makes more sense for us to write one than writing zero you know? so we have the draw type function we can go back right here and remove the comment tag and what we actually do is we give the name the draw function the draw tile function take the first uh, component is the id of the of the of the texture we want to draw from we want the size so the second one is the size now the position you see we actually use uh, i don't want it. this guy does have to be there we haven't created a camera right now so we don't need that so we simply check this is the tile size we want to select exactly uh, we want to go out and create a rect from these two components and select only the path so this is going to be we take the, the 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 y value and the i value and this is going to create like a square with 32 uh, width and 32 height and we're going to be selecting only that part on on our texture and now the row and the the column of the frame we want to draw that's exactly what we actually gave here and this is actually it so we're gonna be trying to draw that map on the screen we hope it's gonna be working without problem and uh, yeah but for now I'm gonna try to compile and see if we got some issue or problem or errors yeah we have one so let me see why what do they have to say index wasn't declared index because it was ah it's outside of this box ah this has to be here so this has to be here for all these guys so we make sure we put it there because all these things are inside of the else so I want to make sure we really this so make sure this guy should shift it also shift it remove this kind of 
compile this and see if we have um, perfect we don't have any so the problem was because you know we want to draw only when the tail id is different from zero so if it's zero we don't want to make anything that's why all these things down here should be inside of the ends that was the whole point about that now i want you to switch back to your uh engine so we go to call engine and there we'll simply create we we'll pass our map and try to draw it on the screen but i need a small break right now i need to drink something okay i'm back now um, as i said you want to go back to your engine.cpp and there we want to include our map parser we need to include it i don't know why i have space here include a parser and uh, also go to your header there we want to create we want to include the map want to create like a map the current level map for the game so like the map which is actually going to be drawn on the screen simply say game map and down here we need to create a map so we go down here and we simply create it so game map level map so I call it like that you can call it whatever you want it doesn't matter now we can go back to our CPP file we already included this the first thing we need to do is to load our map so now we do it before the texture so we say if map parser so you remember our map parser is a, a singleton class and i just remember that i didn't initialize the the instance since we didn't use it it didn't bring any kind of problem that's why so we can simply go ahead and initialize this instance right here so I'll say map parser map parser instance equal to null point if we don't do this then we'll have some problem and also um, the last thing that we can simply do because it doesn't require a lot is this clean function right here and simply go out and hit this inside so what it basically does is we simply clear our map so um, I think the name of, of that map is a little bit different so I think it's map dick something like that so make sure to change that to your value I so don't get any kind of bad surprise so try to compile this and see if things work let me try it again perfect everything's working now simply say get instance and we want to say load so if it didn't make it true so we want to give a message um i've been using this sdl log stuff but i think it's a bad idea i'm going to be changing that and use the std the ios stream so but you can still leave it because you know if if you know you have any kind of problem with SDL and you want to check something this will actually fail so but it's not important we have STD say out you can simply say failed to um, load to load map you say STD and line but if everything was perfect then we want to get that map we want to get the current map so if you remember right here let me go back to the map the ID we gave you the load function right here the ID we gave was level 1 so you can change it to map or whatever you can even use uh, big characters if you prefer it like that because those are constant it won't change but it depends on you so I can go back and here I'm gonna load that map into the the new object I created so we say and level map is equal to map parser get instance and there we say get map get map uh, why did I say maps because I thought I was giving all the maps so let me go ahead and change that With map yeah here I want to remove the s 
and I go back to my engine and there I can give the ID I think it's mapped right Let me change that map okay perfect now we get the map so the map is already in this guy the last thing we want to do is to draw it on the on the screen so that's simply that so we go ahead and do the render function before the player we want to render our map so we say m level map we render yeah we can also call the update function for for that guy for the player right here but there is nothing inside so just just like that to make sure we call it because we can try to use this for something now let's try this and hope it will work i'm pretty sure it will fail so let me compile this and see told you now we need to find out why it's not working so now i found out why it wasn't working the reason is because um in my playstyle layer i I didn't use the right, the correct operator here to make my comparison, so I did have something like this, which doesn't actually make any sense. So make sure you have the right uh, uh, operator right here, this one. And um, there were also something else. I think um, I have to switch over to my tile layer. Give me a second, right here. So um, I changed the way I initialize the component right here. So. Uh, but this I, I checked it it doesn't matter anyway my problem was something else but I, I just want to show this because I don't want you to be surprised that this is looking different from what you actually got right now so this is important to make sure you have this like that and uh, one more one one more last thing uh, yeah also I didn't give the right value when I was initializing this I think here I was no, I had something like tile size right here and this was really bad because we're trying to initialize a, a vector I, I'm really surprised that it did work I, I was waiting the compiler to tell me that something was wrong but it didn't so that was definitely a, a bad idea so I'm gonna compile that right now and let you see the result on the screen and there we got it so our map is not the best one we haven't drawn something perfect right now but I'm just going to show you with the map um, uh, that you that I showed you from the demo in the beginning of this video. So I've got to go here and change the name of this map here and put it to map 1 and I can simply compile it. So you guys know that this is not fake. So you can see right here we have our map thrown on the screen. Now I want to add a last thing before we move on. I want to make this window sizable so that we can actually maximize it or or minimize it because that that's pretty much important somehow so let let's do this now what we actually have to add right here go to your core engine.cpp and uh, you know where we created our window we need to add some flags because it's all about flags and actually i i created this variable right here as the windows flag in window flag and I put some, I don't have to put this OpenGL stuff. And I put some, some flag right here, like resizable. And we also add this high DPI. This is important when, uh, you know, when you have a screen which actually high, has some optimization about colors and stuff. It doesn't matter for now. So, and just go ahead where, where we had the zero right here and just put our window flag right there. Window flag. So, and we can just go ahead and try this and see, compile it. And you see right now I can maximize my screen and it all fit on the screen of my, my computer. And that's actually perfect because we want to be able to draw some huge map and simply, you know, put it on our screen and be able to move, move on and do a lot of things with it. And that's, that's the whole idea about this. So, um, that was it for this video. Um, if it didn't work for you, you still know where to find the source code. And if you have any kind of question or concern about anything, just write me in the comment section below or whatever. And uh, yeah, think about to support me on Patreon.